I do want to also show you how to properly get in a saddle, and I guess for that I need to get rid of this. So, this is the ESS. First thing you want to do is grab, take the bridge strap. I would, first of all, adjust it probably 18 inches. I'd start at 18, possibly 20 inches between D-ring to D-ring. Length of this strap, adjust it that way. And then once you get it that adjusted, I would also probably take my waist belt, your waist belt, and I would try to make these pieces, the, the male and the female end, both about the same length, because you're gonna put that on at some point, and a lot of times when you buy them, one side will be really short, and it's hard to put it on and get it adjusted. So adjust those out so they're about both about the same length. And you may want to also extend your buckles on your leg straps all the way close to the end so they'll easily come up between your legs and hook on. But anyway, this is this is an ESS and typically because there's a lot more weight on the outer panel, the inner panel rides up. So have your leg strap sticking out the front, have your waist belt unbuckled hanging out the back and then take your hand, your other hand, and just stick it in here and pull this inner panel down so that it's overlapping, evenly overlapping that outer panel. Then just grab right below the D-rings, just like that, and separate the two D-rings, and now you're gonna have a big gap. So right where that gap is, you just step through, and keep those panels overlapped, and then you just slide it up to your waist, and you just slide those two panels, keep them evenly overlapped, and slide them up above your waist. So you want them above where a belt would be on a pair of pants. You want them above that. Okay, and then just reach here, grab your, grab the two D-rings, and take this belt, grab the female end, pull it out, take the male end, and then it's probably a little bit easier if you lean forward, stick your finger through there, Slide those together and snug this up tight. You can't make that too tight. The tighter you make that, the better it's going to be because, because the waist belt is attached to the outer panel and the inner panel is inside of that. When you tighten that outer panel, it locks the inner panel in place. Now, there have been people that don't particularly like this hanging here. I've got to ease two simple solutions for that. Uh, to me, it's not a big deal because I put this on at the base of the tree. I take it out of my backpack and put it on at the base of the tree. But a lot of guys like to walk with it on, and I totally understand that because it doesn't weigh anything. It weighs one pound and 15 ounces, the whole thing. So I've got two different solutions, and let me get them. Okay, here we go. Okay, what I did is I grabbed, this is your lineman rope. So this is exactly the way it comes. It's going to have a carabiner on the looped end, and it's going to have a carabiner attached to a Prusik knot. So take your carabiner, hook it to your lineman loop over here, which is basically what you're going to hook it to anyway when you start climbing the tree. Wrap it around you. Now I actually slid the carabiner all the way out to the end on, this, on the uh, end of the lineman rope. Wrap it around you as much as you can and then take your carabiner and hook it to your bridge. Hook it to your bridge strap, bridge strap, and then just slide this around. Basically till it tightens everything up. And then you can just take the tag end of your lineman and stick it through there for walking. Now you got it all tight. And you're also wearing your lineman rope. So now all you gotta do is when you, when you get to the base of the tree, Pull out the tag into your lineman. Disconnect the carabiner. Unwrap your lineman, throw it around the tree. Hook your carabiner to the other side. Adjust it to the tree diameter and climb. So that's one way of doing it with 
the lineman rope that you're going to be using anyway. Now I typically don't carry, I, has, I see no reason whatsoever to have a pouch. I've never used a pouch. I've done this for 40 years. I've killed 44 book bucks out of a saddle. Uh, nobody else in the country or on earth has done that. I'm quite positive of that. Uh, I've never used a pouch. I've probably got 100 guys into saddle hunting that I've modified their saddles for them. None of them have ever used a pouch. There's no reason to use a pouch if you're carrying a fanny pack or if you're carrying a backpack. This stuff can be carried in your backpack. If you're walking in, keep it in your back or wear it in your lineman rope and then keep your tree tether in your pack. So the other option is to just buy a 24 inch bungee strap, just a simple little 24 inch elastic bungee strap and take that and hook it to, hook it to your bridge either way, either side doesn't really matter. Wrap it around your waist and hook it to your lineman loop, hook it to anything, doesn't matter what you hook it to. Now that, that is tight. <laughs> That's actually much tighter than that was because it's elastic. That is a super simple way. And those bungee straps cost about $2.49. You can buy them at Dollar Store, Menards, Lowe's, any, any place, Walmart. So that, that is a really easy fix. Then once you get to the tree, just take the bungee off, stick it in a pocket, stick it in your pack or whatever, and put your line and rope on. So those are the two quick, easy fixes for this, if that's an issue. And again, uh, I don't use pouches. I see no reason to have a pouch. I did a video using pouches with my son, John. Uh, I don't think I ever aired it because I didn't like it. And when you're walking with pouches physically on your mollies hooked to your saddle, because this has mollies on it, just like all other saddles, so you can hook pop pouches to it to carry ropes and stuff in. But when we did the video, basically when you're hunting, you're, you're at an angle. You know, you're at an angle to the tree. So your pouch is dangling. When you're walking, your, pouch is, your pouch and the weight in your pouches is against your body. So it's basically staying tight to your body when you walk. And you don't notice it anyway because you're walking. But when you're hunting, we did a video and from the side, when I would make a move, that when I stopped my body, that pouch would wiggle for about a second and a half. And I said that to me, where I hunt, that is 100% unacceptable. Because if I make a move and I have to stop because all of a sudden a deer kind of looks in my direction and I'm in their peripheral vision and everything's still, that little movement, that'll, that'll blow me. That, that will definitely give me away. So I talk a lot about getting picked because I hunt in the most pressured state in the dang country. We have 320,000 bow hunters and we can kill two bucks. So not only do we have more pressure if we just were a one buck state, it's double the pressure because everybody wants to shoot one buck, they keep hunting. And we got almost 50 days of gun season, 30 days of buck gun season. Uh, it's just a terrible state. So when I talk about getting picked, you know, I've hunted here for 53 years. I've hunted in other states, you know, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Illinois. It's totally different. So if you're hunting in a low pressure managed area, you can get away with a lot of stuff, but you're hunting in PA, West Virginia, uh, New York, De De Delaware, Massachusetts, states with high populations and a lot of hunting pressure. Um, you better pay attention to details so you don't get picked. And even if you're hunting in a low pressured area, there's gonna be times, there will be times when you make those subtle mistakes, you will get picked. So anyway, that's all I have on this. And now I'm going to uh, get in a tree. Now you can still use this lineman loop. You know, if you're standing at the base of the tree, you wanna go up the tree with it, you can still hook your lineman carabiner to this, run it around the tree and go up the tree, you know, while this is still on. And then once you get up the tree, you hook up your tree tether, then you disattach your line, you know, you're gonna have to basically, once you hook up your tree tether, you're gonna to wanna to hook it to this bridge so you're going to take off that bungee strap and then you disattach the other thing and then what i usually do is i will unbuckle the buckle slide this underneath my butt and now that's that right there is about how i like to sit i hope you can see that i like to sit with the panels just barely touching each other so i got a 12 inch seat there or if it's early season 
and I don't have a lot of clothes on, I'll overlap them. So I got probably about a nine or a 10 inch seat. And then there's sometimes where I, I totally will overlap them. So I got a six inch seat. It's just covering the bottom of my butt. And then when I'm getting in a tree early in the morning and I want to go to sleep, I'll pull this sucker up, up into here and I'm going to be hooked to my tree tether right here. And I'll wrap my arms around my tree tether so I don't jerk off to the sides. And then I'll just wrap my arms around it and I'll lean on it and fall asleep. And this gives me back support, kind of like a recliner on a lot of the single panels. The only difference with, they're coming out with a lot of single panel saddles now that actually have a recliner at the top, so they're trying to replicate a two panel saddle. But they don't understand that the single panel is still your butt seat. So that butt seat is still gonna start riding up and it's still gonna have to be pulled back underneath because that's your seat. And when the top rides up, the bottom rides up. It all rides up together. So with this, this always stays under your butt all the time. It never ever moves unless you physically move it yourself. So this is really versatile. See how I stick my finger, my thumb under there to move that. If you had fabric over top of that panel, you have to reach down here, grab it and pinch it to pull it down. With this one with the open strapping, you just slide your thumb underneath there and pull it down or vice versa. If you want to pull it up, you just stick your index finger underneath it and pull it up. You don't have to grab it and pinch it. Because a lot of times when you got a lot of clothes on, they're all bound up back there. And it's hard to reach inside of it to grab that and pinch it as opposed to just sticking your finger underneath this one of the straps and pulling it up or pushing it down. So there's a lot of a lot of subtlety things about saddle hunting that most people don't even think about because they haven't been in that situation. Uh, there are not many situations saddle hunting. I have not been in over 41 years of hunting out of a saddle. Um, uh, I, I designed this, I think, I don't think there's a saddle even close to the comfort of a, a two panel saddle. And I think this is the best design of all the two panel saddles because of the D-rings. Um, and because it has open, open straps, it doesn't have fabric around the straps. And another thing about this a two panel saddle is it doesn't matter how you adjust the outer panel, this inner panel always is under your butt. It never moves. Biggest complaint, hands down, with a single panel saddle is keeping it under your butt. Because when you fidget, the saddle wants to climb up into your lower back. And when it climbs up into your lower back, guess what? It's a one piece seat. When the top climbs, the bottom pulls out from underneath your butt and you're always finding yourself grabbing the tree or grabbing, you know, grabbing your rope here between the tree and your carabiner, lifting up and pulling it back under your butt. You do, that's the biggest complaint I hear about single panel saddles and I hear it all the time. I did a uh, training deal yesterday at a store because we're going into retail in Michigan and Ohio. Uh, the owner of the store has been hunting out of a saddle, Trophy Line Ambush Saddle, which I designed in 2000. Uh, he's been hunting out of that for 20 years. And he got in an ESS and it blew him away at how much, com how much more comfortable it was. Because he said, man, with my Trophy Line, I'm always pulling it down under my butt. And also the seat on it is really deep. So the seat kind of comes down into his, lower, into his upper thigh and it also rides above his waistline. So with an ESS or any two panel saddle for that matter, you know, you can keep, you can keep your seat where it's nice and neatly under your butt. But the inner panel is gonna stay under your butt all the time. Doesn't matter what you do with the outer panel, the inner panel capitalized A-L-W-A-Y-S always remains under your butt. It never climbs. Changing clothes, that's another deal. Um, I'll change my clothes on an all-day sit probably four times. Um, I'll walk in extremely lightweight so I don't overheat and don't perspire. And if it's cold out, I'll have three or four layer garments or a heated vest in my backpack. Once I climb up the tree, I, I have still got on my light gear. Once I get up the tree, you know, I'll overlap these panels. So now there's now it's basically a six inch seat because there's six inch panels and when they're totally overlapped i got a six inch seat and now i can untuck my clothes whatever take off my jacket hanging on one of these hooks 
my sun lock jacket, take off my base garment if I had on a cotton tee for entering, put it in a Ziploc baggie, take out my merino wool undergarment, and then maybe another base garment above that, because that, I kind of put them in my pack as I'm going to need them when I'm hunting. I'll put those on, put my jacket back on, tuck, tuck that stuff back in, put the jacket back on, and then, you know, just slide over here and pull, pull that panel up above my waist, over, over top of the jacket. When it gets like 10, 11 o'clock, if it's sunny out, let's say it's 25 degrees when I get in the tree, by 11 o'clock it's 40 degrees and I'm starting to overheat because the sun's beating on me. Same thing. Stick my thumb underneath my outer panel, slide it back down, take off my jacket, take off the undergarments, put them in my pack, you know, leave on that base merino wool, put my jacket back on. Same thing, pull the panel back up to where I want it. Then three, four, four o'clock on an all-day sit starts to get cold again. What do you do? You just reach down, overlap the saddle panels. Then what do you do? You take your stuff and you put it back on. Take off your jacket, put your other layer garments that you took off, put them back on, put your jacket back on, pull your outer panel back up to where you want it, and then you hunt. When it, once it gets dark and you want to get out of the tree, if you got a long end, exit route, you're gonna overheat if you wear all your clothes out. Even though you might be chilly when you're getting down, once you get down and you start walking a while, you're gonna start sweating if you leave all your clothes on. So again, even in the dark, it's no problem for me to overlap my panels, take off my jacket, take off at least one or two of the other layers, the heated vest, put it in my pack, zip that back up, put my jacket back on, you know, and then basically open the seat back up, widen the seat back up a little bit, then I put my lineman belt on, uh, disattach the tree tether, and, uh, and leave. Climb down the tree and, uh, and go. So now I'm coming in light, I'm leaving light, but I've got plenty of layers to change during the course of the day. And a two panel is so much easier to do that with than a single panel, because a single panel is up at least to your waistline, so it's hard to untuck stuff. It's hard to do stuff with that up that high. So anyway, that's a two panel saddle. Keep in mind, newbies can have this as deep as they want to feel comfortable, and the more you hunt, the shallower you're gonna make that seat. To me, the shallower the seat, the more comfortable it is. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors, and please like and subscribe.